Hello everyone, this is me Manoj your English coach. Welcome to Love English and in today's video, I'm going to be reading a story called Apro JRD. Now let's get started. There are two photographs that hang on my office wall. Every day when I enter my office, I look at them and start my day. They are pictures of two old people. One is of a gentleman in a blue suit and the other one is a black and white photograph of an old man with dreamy eyes and a white beard. Many people have asked me if they are related to me. Some people have even asked me, is this black and white photo that of a Sufi saint or a religious guru? I smile and reply, no, nor are they related to me. Then why do you look at them and start the day? These people made an impact on my life. I'm grateful to them. Who are these people? The man in the blue suit is Bharat Ratan J.R.D. Tata and the black and white photo is of Sir Jamshed Ji Tata. But why do you have their photos in your office? You can call it gratitude. Then invariably I have to tell the person the following story. It happened a long time ago. I was young and bright, bold and idealistic. I was studying in the final year for my master's degree in computer science at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, which was then known as the Tata Institute. For me, life was full of fun and joy. I did not know what helplessness or injustice meant. It was probably the April of 1974. Bangalore was just becoming warm. Red gulmohars were blooming at the IISC campus. I was the only girl in my postgraduate department in engineering and was studying in the ladies hostel. Staying in the ladies hostel. Other girls were pursuing their research in different departments of science. After completing my post-graduation, I was keen to go abroad to do my doctorate in computer science and had already been offered scholarships from universities in USA. I had not thought of taking up a job in India. One day, while on the way to my hostel from the lecture hall, I saw an advertisement on the notice board. It was a standard job requirement notice from the famous automobile company Telco. It stated that the company required young, bright engineers, hard working with excellent academic background, etc. At the bottom there was a small line, lady candidates need not apply. I read it and was very upset. For the first time, I was faced with gender discrimination. Though I was not keen on taking up a job, I took it as a challenge and decided to apply. I had done extremely well in my studies, probably better than most of the boys. Little did I know then that in real life, to be successful, academic excellence is not a necessary condition. After reading the notice, I went fuming to my room. There I decided not only to apply for the job, but also to inform the topmost person of the management of Telco about the injustice. I got a postcard and started to write. But there was a problem. Who was the head of Telco? I did not know. I was so ignorant that I thought it must be one of the Tatas. I knew JRD Tata was the head of Tata group. I had seen his pictures in newspapers. Actually, Sumanth Mulgwankar was then its chairman, which I was not aware. I took the postcard and started writing. Even now, I clearly remember what I had written to JRD. 
Tatas have always been pioneers. They are the people who started the basic infrastructure industries in India like iron and steel, chemicals, textiles, locomotives, etc. They have cared for higher education in India since 1900 and are responsible for the establishment of the Indian Institute of Science. Fortunately, I study there. But I am surprised that in such a company you can make a distinction between men and women. I posted the letter that was written in anger and after a few days forgot about it. Within 10 days, I received a telegram stating that I had to appear for an interview at Telco Pune. At their expense, I was taken aback. But my hostel mates told me I had to use the opportunity to go to Pune free of cost. And the reason? Pune sarees were cheap. I was told to buy sarees for them. I even collected 30 rupees per head for each of their sarees. Now, when I look back, I feel like laughing at the reasons. But then they seemed good ones to make a trip. This was my first visit to Pune. I fell in love with the city and even to this day, it's very dear to my heart. I feel as much at home in Pune as I do at Hubli. The city changed my life in so many ways. As directed, I went to Telco's Pimpri office for the interview. There were six people on the panel and it was only then that I realized this was serious business. This is the girl who wrote to JRD. I heard them whisper to each other as soon as I entered. By then, I knew for sure that I would not get a job. Why should I be scared? So I was rather cool for the interview. Even before they started the interview, I knew they were biased. So I told them rather rudely, I hope this is only a technical interview. They were taken aback by my rudeness and even today I am ashamed at my attitude. During the interview, they asked many technical questions and I answered all of them. Then one elderly gentleman with an affectionate voice told me, Do you know why we said that lady candidates need not apply? The reason is that to this day, we haven't employed any ladies on the shop floor of the factory. This is an automobile industry. Trainees may have to work in shifts. For training, we may have to send them to Jamshedpur in Bihar. All our plants have men and machinery. Our trainees may have to drive. We have a trainees hostel and a guest house for them. If a lady enters, then how we can accommodate her? We do not know how men on the shop floor will accept her. How will she come for shifts? We care for our employees, particularly if she is a lady. It is not a college where there is no gender difference. This is a factory. When it comes to academics, you are a first ranker throughout. We appreciate that. People like you should work more in research in laboratories. I was a young girl from small town Hubli. My world was very small. I did not know the ways of large corporate houses and their difficulties. So I answered, but somewhere you must start. Otherwise a lady will never be able to work in the factories. You are pioneers in many aspects of life. When I look at your industries, you are far ahead of other people. If you think this way, then how will any lady ever enter this so-called men's domain? Training a candidate costs a lot to our company. You are of a marriageable age. After your training, you will leave this company and shift to wherever your husband works. Is it not a waste of money for us? I thought for a moment and I replied, I definitely agree with what you say. I'm sure when many of you married, your wives came along with you. That has been our tradition. But is it also not true that many men undergo training 
and just for a few more hundred rupees they shift their jobs you don't have any rule for them you can't stop them finally after a long interview i was told i had been successful in securing a job at telco on the way back i got down at hubli my hometown i was eager to meet my father always my best friend and tell him my adventure i was sure he would be happy and praise me but i was in for a shock he was very upset he said you should have basic manners when addressing elderly people like jrd tata you should have written the letter more politely and put it in an envelope instead of sending a postcard now you have to take up this job because you are morally responsible that is what my future had in store for me never ever had i thought i would take up a job at pune there i met a shy young man from karnataka we became good friends and married the elderly gentleman who interviewed me was dr satya moti who was an excellent technocrat and human being i worked with him for some years after joining telco i realized who jrd was he was the uncrowned king of indian industry i did not get to meet him until i was transferred to bombay jrd had an office at bombay house the headquarters of tata industries one day i was supposed to show some reports to our chairman mr mulgaonkar whom everyone always referred to as sm so i went to his office on the first floor of bombay house while i was in sm's room jrd walked in that was the first time i saw a pro jrd a pro means arts in gujarati in bombay house people used to affectionately call him a pro jrd by this time i knew who he was and was feeling very nervous remembering my rude postcard to him sm introduced me very nicely j look this young girl is an engineer and that to a post graduate she has worked on the shop floor at telco is it not unusual she was the first girl in our telco shop floor jd looked at me i was praying he would not ask me any questions regarding my interview or the postcard thankfully he did not ask me anything about that instead he remarked it is nice that in our country girls are getting into engineering by the way what's your name when i joined telco i was sudha kulkarni sir now i'm sudha moti where do you work at nanavati mahalya i replied he smiled at me nodding his head and the two men started their discussion i just ran out of their room after that i used to see jrd on and off he was the chairman of a large group of companies and i was only an engineer in one of those companies there was nothing we had in common i used to look at him with oh one day i was waiting for moti to come and pick me up after office hours to my surprise i saw jrd standing next to me i did not know how to react i was feeling uneasy again i started worrying about the postcard now when i look back i realized jrd must have forgotten about it it must have been a very small incident to him but not so for me he asked me young lady why are you here office time is over i said so i'm waiting for my husband to come and pick me up jrd said it's getting dark there's no one in the corridor I will wait with you until your husband comes. I was quite used to waiting for Moti, so I was not bothered much by having to wait in the dark. But having JRD waiting along with me made me very uncomfortable. Out of the corner of my eye, I looked at him. He wore a simple white pant and shirt. He was old, yet his face was glowing without any air of superiority. I was thinking look at this person 
He is a chairman, a well-respected man in our country, and he is waiting for the sake of an ordinary lady employee. As soon as I saw Moti, I rushed out. Jadi called and said, "Young lady, tell your husband never to be late and make his wife wait." In 1982, I had to resign from my job at Telco. I was very reluctant to resign, but did not have a choice. Even now, my love and respect for the House of Tatas is the same. I always looked up to JRD as my role model for his simplicity, generosity, kindness, and the care he took of his employees. After I had made my final settlements with the company, I was coming down the steps of Bombay House when I saw JRD coming up. He was absorbed in some thought. I wanted to say goodbye to him, so I stopped. He saw me, and he also stopped. Gently he said, "So, what are you doing, Miss Kulkarni?" That was the way he always addressed me. Sir, I'm leaving Telco. Why are you going? Pune, sir. My husband is starting a company called Infosys. So I have to shift to Pune. Oh, what will you do when you are successful? Sir, I don't know whether we will be successful or not. Never start with diffidence. Always start with confidence. When you are successful, you must give back to society. Society gives us so much. We must return it back. I wish you all the best. Then JRD continued walking up the stairs. I stood for a while, watching him. That was the last time I saw him alive. Many years later, I met Ratan Tata in the same Bombay office, occupying the same chair as JRD. I told him many of my sweet memories of working with Telco. I said, "I cannot call you Mr. Tata like Modi calls you. You are occupying Apro JRD's seat. You will always be chairman, sir, to me." Later, he wrote to me, "It was nice listening about J from you." The sad part is that he is not alive today to see you. I consider JRD a great man because, in spite of being an extremely busy person, he valued one postcard written by a young girl who was asking for justice and questioning him. He must have received thousands of letters every day. He could have thrown mine away in a dustbin, but he didn't do that. He respected the intentions of that unknown girl, who had neither influence nor money, and gave her an opportunity to work in his company. He did not merely give her a job, but also changed her life and mindset forever. Today, in any engineering college, I see that 40 to 50 percent of the students are girls. On the shop floor of many mechanical industries, we see so many ladies working. That time, I think of JRD fondly. If at all time stops and asks me what I want from life, I would say I wish JRD were alive today to see how the company we started has grown. He would have enjoyed it wholeheartedly. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.